Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam amma barahabatifillah Four things we're going to be asked about that we have to reflect upon and think about in relation to this dunya. And <clears throat> that brings up so many ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which encourages us to use our, our time to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that which is good and our wealth and our health. And those are also the things that we're tested with. We're twest, tested with our health. We're tested with our wealth. Uh, and we're tested in our time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with barakah in our time because there's nothing greater for a person who wants to seek knowledge and a person who wants to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than to have barakah in their time and to use their time uh, wisely. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm and nafi or rizqan tayyib wa amal al and to use our time wisely because how many of us use our time for backbiting? How many of us use our time for slander? How many of us use our time to curse the people of good? How many people talk about the Muslim governments? That's how they spend their time in protesting and, uh, and, and spreading um, new mistakes of the leaders and things like this. Some people, that's how they spend a lot of their time. And some people, they spend their time spreading things about the dua to khair. And we're talking about the dua of Ahl Sunnah, that they spend time belittling them and posting on websites and writing in depth articles about Ahl Sunnah. I'm not talking about Ahl Bid'ah, as I always stress. Listen to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we'll try to gain some of the fawaid, some of the benefits that Sheikh Salih bin Ghanim Asidlan, rahmatullah alayhi, rahmatun wasiya, that he mentioned with regards to this hadith. An Abi Barzat al Aslami, قال, قال Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, La tazu qadama abdin, yom al qiyama, hatta yusalu, a yusala, an umrihi, fima afnahu. وعن علمه فيما فعل وعن ماله من أين أكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وعن جسمه فيما أبلاه أخرجه ترمذي حديث ترمذي and he said it's hadith حسن صحيح in this hadith of أبي برزة أبي برزة الأسلمي <clears throat> he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the servant will continue until the day of judgment until he reaches that day and he is asked how he's asked about his uh, about his age and he's asked about his striving you know how did he what kind of efforts did he how did he spend his time and what efforts did he make? And on his knowledge and, his, and how he practiced uh, or, or what he did with that knowledge and his wealth and where he spent it and where he earned it from and on his body in what he, uh, in how he uh, used it. Did he use it for obedience to Allah or did he use it for disobedience to Allah. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in general, it shows us uh, that we will be asked about some very important issues. We're not going to be asked about so-and-so and is so-and-so off the minhaj or so-and-so off this or so-and-so off that. We're not going to be asked about that. But you'll be asked if you follow Ahl Bid'ah, of course. And you'll be asked if you're following Bid'ah, you're following that which is against the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you're calling to that. However, you're going to be asked about some important things and you're going to be asked about the, uh, the, the, uh, the questions in the grave. So this shows that on Yom Al-Qiyamah we'll have other questions. But in our graves, in the beginning of Barzakh, you'll be asked those three things. Men Rabbuk, Madinak, Men Nabiyak. You know, who is your Lord? Uh, what is your religion? And who is your prophet? Those are the things you're going to be asked in Barzakh. But Yom Al-Qiyamah, Kama qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith, you're going to be asked about some other things. And from those things, the first thing he said uh, is that you'll be asked about your, your age, you know, how, how you spent your time while you were alive in this dunya. And how you strove. 
So this could be this pertains to how you how you spent your the netma of the age that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you in this life to do good or to do uh, and, and, and do and practice as however you practice. So you're going to be asked about that. How did you prepare for the akhirah? How did you use the ni'am min ni'amillah? How did you use the blessings from amongst the many blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, what did you strive for? Did you strive just for wealth? Did you strive just for, did you use all your time to follow up the mistakes of others? Did you use all your time just to do sins and wickedness? Did you use all your time to spread wickedness? Did you use all your time to, to, to oppress other people? Did you use your time to steal, cheat, lie, commit zina, watch the haram, do the haram, smoke the haram? Drink the haram. How did you use your time? So our time is invaluable. And that's what we learned from this hadith. And the second question that he mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is how did you, is that you'll be asked about, uh, the person will be asked about their knowledge. You know, what? how much Islamic knowledge? They're not going to be asked if they're a chemist, they're a biologist, if they're an anthropologist. If they're a geologist, if they're into, uh, you know, whatever of the various sciences of the world, but they're going to be asked on your Islamic knowledge and what you did. That is the scariest thing for all of us that we need to be concerned. And I would say even more so for those people who uh, either seek knowledge or who have sought knowledge. Those people who have been blessed by Allah to learn more about his deen. Because if a person has the correct intention to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in seeking knowledge, whoever traverses the path of of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path of Jannah. So if you are one of those who seek knowledge, and it is knowledge that benefits you and gets you closer to Allah, and, and, and Allah makes it easier for you to get to Jannah from that knowledge, then have a khair. Then this person is has attained success. But if you sought knowledge, and that knowledge actually brought you further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you committed more sins, and you knew it was wrong. You back, were backbiting people more. <laughs> and, and, you know, so you didn't act upon that knowledge. So that's scary. O oh, you who believe, why do you, why do you, uh, why do you say that which you don't do? That is scary. That is scary. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and bless us with a class with the battle of Sunnah and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah protect us from hypocrisy. Amin ya rabbil alameen. Then he, uh, he said, the, the next thing you're asked about is your wealth. How did you earn it? How did you spend it? Did you earn it from riba? Did you put your money in, in most of the banks in the world? And, and you gained direct interest? We're not saying the bank just gained off you. We're talking about you putting in the money and just saying, hey, I don't care. I'm uh, checking, so checking accounts not not enough. Why should my money sit in the bank and not gain benefit for me? So that benefit, which is riba, which is really no benefit at all because the law makes war. Allah wa Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they make war on the one who does who who takes riba. That is scary enough to make me think that, hey, I don't care what the, those people who call them sheikhs and muftis in, in North America or wherever they may be who say that it's okay to get one house on riba or it's okay to do one investment on riba or it's okay to build one masjid on riba. That doesn't, that doesn't, Jive with me. Why? Because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, aside from all the, the, uh, the verses in the Quran and Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also, I, I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam let us know that the one who takes the least amount of, uh, of riba is it's like they had sexual relations with their mother in the Kaaba. And that's a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it lets us know we're going to be asked about how we earned our money and how we spend it. Khair. So what if you're blessed with wealth and you spend it in all kind of garbage? 
you spend it on buying the newest gadgets. And that's okay to have the newest gadgets. And it's okay to be into the newest gadgets. As long as it's not superseding your akhirah. As long as all your thing is not into that, into showing off, you've got to have a Lexus Jeep or whatever, you know, some really nice car, but you can't give one dollar to Syria. You can't help the believers in Ethiopia with 50 cents. You can't, you don't even think about the Rohingya. The brothers and sisters that are suffering in a Sri Lanka is not even your concern. Those, the Fukra and the Musakin in Kashmir, you don't care. Somalia, it doesn't even cross your mind. But rather, you need to spend, you need to get more gold. And you need, to, and especially if you're really wealthy, you need to get uh, collector's items and, and, and make your house, your house is so beautiful and you need this and you need that and you need paintings and all kind of uh, exotic things. But it's difficult for you to part and spend a few dollars to help your brothers and sisters who are suffering. So you're going to be asked about how you spent your money and how you earned it. And the last thing that he meant, mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was about your body. And the shaykh mentions that this is, in, this is referring to your appearance. Did you use it for obedience to Allah or did you use it for disobedience? So in a women's, woman's case, did you use it for modeling in front of men and ma being a makeup artist on YouTube and... and, 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 and and having husbands, your husband, and, and he's okay with that, and you, you're just beautifying yourself with the latest lipstick, and how to make your nose smaller, how to make the wrinkles look go away, and all this stuff. Is that how you used your, your, your beauty and your, your, your appearance? Or did you use it, did you use your strength as a man, or whatever, to defend your brother or sister in Islam? or to defend someone who's being oppressed? Or did you use uh, your, your, your garments, your nice garments, just to look good as a believer, as a sort of dawa, or whatever the case may be? The bottom line is, how did you use your physical appearance that Allah has blessed you with? Then, so the Sheikh he mentions some of those uh, benefits, and he mentions that a person is given all these ni'am, all of these blessings, and they use it, either use it to show ungratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to show gratefulness. Imma uh, kafirun wa imma shakura. That they either use it, they're either ungrateful and doing disobedience and ma'asi wa dhunub, or they are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're using it, they're showing that shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're showing their... Uh, 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 their, their, their thankfulness to Allah may Allah bless us to be from them may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our many many wicked sins Amin. Ya Rabbil Alameen from this hadith the shaykh mentions uh, three fuaid and he says first is this is a warning for the Muslims to not waste their time with those things which have no benefit don't rectify anything and have no benefit for them in their religion or in their uh, hereafter, uh, in in their in their religion, and in their worldly affairs. So that's very important. Okay, if you're a businessman and you're studying things to to help you improve your business and getting more into economic issues, that's fine. If you're a political scientist and you've got to go into you work for a policy think tank, okay. You need to be in those books and in the magazines and know about the news and you need to, to, to be involved in those things. If you are a scientist, you need to be, an, or you're into technology, you need to be up on that. However, if you're doing, doing sinful things or spying on people or something where there's no benefit in this life nor in the next, then that's when you need to check yourself. And be careful. And this hadith is a warning, a stern warning against those who fall into that. The second benefit he mentioned is that this hadith gives us certainty that every person is responsible for their deeds. That is highly, that's high, uh, very powerful, Habitifillah. And I hope this message goes to you and that you act upon it. And I hope this message will trigger something in my heart to come closer to Allah and get away from sins, and be a better servant of Allah, and to practice what I preach, because it's, it's going to be a hujjah, 
either a hujjah luck or hujjah alayk. The Quran is a hujjah luck or hujjah alayk. The Quran is either a proof for you on your behalf because you were practicing it, or it's a hujjah alayk, or it is a proof against you. It's evidence against you because you read it and you didn't practice. The third benefit that he mentioned, he said that this hadith uh, is a uh, should put uh, fear in the believer to not be wasteful of their time and their youth and their wealth and their knowledge. All of those things are invaluable. All of those things have great importance in our life and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was to myself and the shaitan.